If you have a basic focuser like me but hanker after a fancy dual speed one, watch this video. I'm going to go through a few ways of gaining fine focus control for little or free. Whether you're using a refractor or a reflector telescope, it's often recommended for astrophotography to upgrade the focuser to a dual speed. That's because a single speed focuser it can be real tricky to make such fine adjustments that we do need to make. These dual speed focusers start at £150, so I wasn't going to. You could get a Skywatcher 130 PDS with one of these fitted for 240 so I figured I'd wait for the day I could afford one of those on the used market. Until then, I was looking for some other option, and I'd seen in other sources that you can simply just put a bigger wheel on there. With a bigger focuser wheel, a larger diameter on the outside, due to physics and science and stuff, you can achieve finer focus control. But I didn't have the space to put much of a larger wheel on there. So what I did instead was took my wheel, I drilled two little holes in there and put two bolts up through those holes and the nuts to hold them in place. And then when reattached you could simply use a pen, a pencil or a screwdriver in this case and you get the same effect as a huge wheel. A small amount of movement at the top of that screwdriver is a tiny amount at the wheel. Now I'd done this little mod early on in astronomy but when I was getting into astrophotography, I had a different plan for this. Because I'd made an on-step controller, this, coupled with the software I use, has the ability to do auto-focusing. So I was going to initially have a motor-driven focuser. I bought the motors, I bought the kit with the gears and the belts, but it was going to be just too heavy to put on an already heavy scope. So I figured I'd, I'd wait for a lighter scope to do that. But then I came to thinking, I've got pulleys and belt, which means I could still gear this down. And that's what I did. So I took a little while measuring it all up and checking it out, but I made this little bracket. I'm sorry you don't get to see this from scratch, but I'm giving you a good look at this bracket so you can see what I've done. I've basically taken a curved metal plate with some elongated strips which allow for adjustment and belt tensioning. Underneath that curved plate there are a couple of little rubber washers so as it's not damaging the tube itself. There's some cut down L brackets holding a bolt with the small pulley wheel at the top. On one side of this is a pair of locking nuts so that as it spins it doesn't tighten on itself that'll spin freely the second bolt halfway down is just there for a bit of rigidity now when it comes to fitting this bracket I've had to drill the tube and this might not appeal to many of you if your scope is under warranty I wouldn't recommend it but mine's like 16 years old already if you do drill your tube don't get any swarf flying around in there drill with a vacuum cleaner below it and don't, for God's sake, do it upright with the mirror at the bottom, if you know what I mean. So anyway, as I put the bolts up through those holes to fix this, I've had to put some little rubber pieces, which are tap washers, that I've cut down to a smaller size, and that is what's going to tension this as it clamps down. So when I fit this, and I clamp down on those bolts, I squeeze those little rubber tap washers, and that'll tension the belt. Before actually fitting anything here, we want to make sure it's all lined up nicely. So to start with, I'm literally just putting a nut and washer on each of those little bolts to hold that bracketry in place, but I'm not tightening down yet. I then move on to the pulley wheel, which is to fit onto the focuser shaft. Now, I don't recall, but I have a feeling I had to drill out the back of this a little bit wider to fit on that shaft. 
but the aluminium drills nice and easily anyway. Now what I have to do here is to try and ensure that when the two wheels and the belt are all lined all together that they're actually lined up so that the belt is running true and straight and not at an angle. So I'm going to pop in the original screw that held the original focuser wheel on and just bring that to a point where it seems to be running about straight. I then, with some tiny allen key, like two or two and a half mil allen key, I can nip up the grub screws in that pulley wheel to clamp down on the focuser shaft. And once that's up nice and tight, I can nip up that original focuser wheel screw. And that wheel is then set. So now we need to tighten down on this bracketry with the smaller wheel. I'm sure first time round I must have had more hands because it was a bit of a struggle keeping tension on it and clamping down on those nuts without moving the bolts from up underneath. But I got there. I did though touch the secondary mirror with the back of my hand so watch for that when you're in there. Now if you can keep tension and keep nipping down on those nuts that will tension this pulley belt and it needs to be fairly taut but not overly tight. If it's a little bit slack it will slip very easily. Once all done then it's simply the case that we've got to fit the original wheel onto the end of that bolt on my bracketry arrangement. What I've done here is put a nut inside that focuser wheel in the face of it and again I can't remember but I must have drilled a little bit into that to allow for this. That is now effectively a captive nut so I'll need to wind that focuser so I've got enough room to screw the bolt into it and once that's nipped up it's nipped up against the double locking nuts so that's nice and tight. That then is done. This is now a 3.75 to 1 ratio dual speed focuser effectively. It doesn't look as pretty as the Skywatcher version I know but it works just fine. At this point on putting it back together I realized that the focuser wheel is fouling on that second bolt on the bracketry which never happened first time so it must have tightened down a little further this time so a quick simple fix would be a very small washer I didn't have one small enough so I took a small o-ring put that inside and that just gives me that extra millimeter and it now runs free so what we have here is basically a dual speed focuser. The original focuser knob that I never touched is 1 to 1 but the new one that's been geared down is 1 to 3.75. It's not as good as the 1 in 10 Skywatcher version and it damn sure ain't as pretty but it does the job. This allows much finer control. Now putting a little piece of tape onto these you can see the 3.75 to 1 in action and that figure is derived from the amount of teeth on the pulley wheels. Now to do this the cheapest way you would get a 3 to 1 ratio because there are readily available kits on Amazon that are 60 teeth and 20 teeth with a pulley belt in a pack. So 60, 20, that gives you a 3 to 1. However, because of the stuff I bought for on step I also had a 16 teeth smaller pulley wheel and therefore I used that and this is how it works out 3.75 I don't believe that you can fit a larger wheel than 60 as far as I could tell the next step up is 80 and that looked too big for my setup it might not be for yours if you can get one smaller than 16 go for it I'll leave the maths to you on what ratio you get and I think that's about as much as I can say on this it works it works a treat so that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, your likes, your comments so far. And I will see you next time.